السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. So today we have um, some interesting stories, many many interesting stories. In fact, if I ask you what is one theme that ties all of the stories of Surah Al-A'raf together, what do you think it could be? So every, almost every story is about commanding good and forbidding evil. You have the stories of all of the prophets, Nuh alayhi salam, Hud alayhi salam, Salih alayhi salam, Lut alayhi salam, Shu'aib alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of the people of the Saturday, Ashab al-Sabt, those people who violated the, the covenant of not fishing on Saturday. And then uh, the people who started to worship a calf. And Harun alayhi salam, the brother of Musa alayhi salam, is forbidding the evil. And we will look at these stories. <clears throat> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this story of the people of Sabt. And we'll look at lessons from them. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders them, the Bani Israel, that you cannot catch fish on Saturdays. This is your holy day. No work is allowed. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested their patience that on Saturdays they get the most amount of fish like bubbling out in front of their eyes while the rest of the days they are struggling to find some. So some people came up with a trick. They said, okay, we're going to lay out our nets and traps and everything on Friday before the Sabbath begins. So everything is going to be automated. So we'll come back and we would have caught that fish on, and we'll just retrieve it on Sunday. Now when they started doing that, a group of them, among them, they said, <coughs> They said, um, you should, they started to tell him, hey, look what we are doing. This is playing games with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going around and this is not right and we should not do that. So when this group starts to tell group A not to do it, group C comes in and group C says to group B that why are you wasting your time and effort? These people, they don't care about Allah. They don't care about his commands. Don't even waste your energy over these people because they're not going to listen to you. So the group B, who was commanding the good and forbidding the evil, they said, Qalu ila rabbikum wa yattakun. They said, we are doing it <clears throat> for two reasons. Number one is to be free from responsibility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that so that we are not held accountable for having seen evil with our eyes and we didn't do or say anything about it. That's number one. And number two, perhaps they may listen. Perhaps they may fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we don't know the end result. The result is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is in our hand is to do the effort that we are required to do, which is to do the effort to command the good and forbid the evil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ أَنْجَيْنَا الَّذِينَ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ السُّوءِ وَأَخَذْنَا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا بِعَذَابٍ بَئِيسٍ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْسَقُونَ When they ignored the warning they were given, <coughs> so we rescued those who used to warn against evil and overtook the wrong, wrongdoers with a dreadful punishment for their rebelliousness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the people who were commanding the good were saved, who were forbidding the evil were saved, the others were destroyed by the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one story. Another story, Musa alayhi salam, he goes to Tur to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get the, the Ten Commandments as we call them, Al-Wah. And when he comes back, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that while you are here, your people have taken a calf. They have made a calf out of gold and all of the jewelry that they had, and they have started to worship it. So Musa alayhi salam, you already know that the story of Musa alayhi salam, and of course, you know, those of you who don't know, every, fri every fajr after Salat al-Fajr, we discuss stories of the prophets. We are up to Ibrahim alayhi salam. So inshallah, if you haven't joined so far, you are welcome to join. And there is no ticket for that. <coughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمَّا رَجَعَ مُوسَىٰ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ غَضْبَانَ أَسِفًا 
قال بئس ما خلفتموني من بعدي عجلتم أمر ربكم وألقى الألواح وأخذ برأس أخيه يجره إلي قال ابن أم إن القوم استضعفوني وكادوا يقتلونني فلا تشمد بي الأعداء ولا تجعلني مع القوم الظالمين When Musa returned to his people totally furious You remember Musa alayhi salam is the one person you don't mess with You know if he punches you you don't just get a black eye, you die. That's happened already. So Musa alayhi salam, he comes back and he is furious that look, Allah just saved us from this painful punishment that Fir'aun was giving us. And here, not even like too long after, you have started to worship this calf. Besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is furious and he said, what an evil thing you have committed in my absence. Do you want to hasten the punishment of your Lord? You want the punishment of Allah to come right now, like as if you can't wait, <coughs> you want it to be right now. Then, and he threw the tablets, the tablets that Allah had given him. He said, tablets on the side, he grabs his brother Harun with his beard or with his hair, <coughs> dragging him closer. He's like, he's really angry. And <coughs> Harun says to him, Call Abna Ummah. He says, O oh, son of my mother, these people overpowered me and they were about to kill me. They were about to kill me, so do not humiliate me and make my enemies rejoice. If you do this, they're going to be happy. Nor count me among the wrongdoing people, meaning I didn't approve them because he had left Harun salam in charge of them. When Harun salam told them, hey, what you're doing is wrong, they all rounded up on him and they were about to kill him. So he backed up and he waited until Musa alayhi salam returns so to deal with them. So he's now telling him the story. <clears throat> so Musa alayhi salam, he then uh, basically, he, when his Musa, when Walamma Sakata Am Musa Ghadab, Akhad al Alwah, so when his anger went down, then he picked up the tablets and he said, This is guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we see from all of these stories, some important point. And the important point is that when you forbid evil, when you see some evil happening in front of you, Islam says you must take a stance and you must try to stop the evil. But you don't take blind action. You don't take um, <clears throat> unthoughtful action. But rather you have to strategize as to what the best way is. And you want to make sure that you don't bring about a bigger evil while you're trying to stop a smaller evil. Sometimes it may be better like Harun alayhi salam when he realized, you know what, if this happens, they are going to divide and these people right now, they are just a small group of people. If we keep pushing them, they might cause such a big ruckus that they might actually, <coughs> they might take over and they might like do much more evil than that. So right now let's leave it contained. Let Musa alayhi salam come with the command of Allah and then we will deal with them. So the scholars of Islam, they say that <coughs> if you see evil happening in front of you, whether it's in your family, or it's in your community, or it's in your country, it's in your city, wherever it is, they say that there are three things that we must keep in mind. Number one is knowledge. Number one is knowledge. The one who's forbidding the evil must understand that is the issue even actually haram? Is the issue uh, really that, you know, what is the priority in this issue? The, in order for them to be able to understand how much action is required, we need to have a lot of knowledge in that matter. So this is not something which is left to the regular people. You know, in uh, Pakistan, about maybe 15, 16, maybe 17 years ago, there was a very, very serious tragedy took place. And the way that it started was that there was a madrasa in Islamabad, which is not too far from where I am from. And the people of this madrasa, they found out that there was a videotape shop in their neighborhood which was selling, you know, adult type of films. I mean, they were selling other movies, but then on top of that, they were also selling adult films right there in Islamabad. So these people, they got together and they said, you know what, we're going to go and shut this thing down. So all of the students, they came out one day with sticks in their hands and they went to the shop and they basically ransacked that entire shop and brought all of the tapes out and something and burned it and stuff like that. So they did it, you know, Pakistan is still a very, very uh, Muslim friendly country. Um, 
using my words carefully, right? That Muslim, Muslim friendly, you know, sometimes. Uh, so uh, apparently it, they found out there's another shop that's also doing that. So they went and they did that. So they did one, two. <coughs> Eventually, the army came back and they started to say, you know what, this is not acceptable. You can't take the law in your hand. And then as you all probably remember that it became a standoff. Once it became a standoff, the army came and they basically surrounded this entire masjid with a madrasa inside with hundreds of students living inside. And uh, first they told them, okay, you guys all need to come out, put your hands up, you're going to get arrested, we'll deal with you. So of course there were some really, really hardliners in there and they said, no, we're going to fight. And whatever the details of the matter were, at the end of the day, they basically lit that place, which is a masjid and a madrasa with hundreds of students living inside. They lit that place up and hundreds of teenagers, young children and you know, young adults, all of them basically got killed in that. Now if you think about when you compare, when you look back, hindsight is 2020. One human life versus 100 adult rated films. Which one is greater sin in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? One human life, right? But subhanAllah, when people, they take, uh, they don't think one, two, three, four steps ahead, they just think one step ahead and let's just go do it. What can end up happening is that it can bring about a greater evil than what existed in the first place. Perhaps there was a different strategy that could have been used. So all of us need to keep this in mind that when we are forbidding evil, remember knowledge, Number two, gentleness. And number three, patience. Like Harun alayhi salam saw the evil, but he said, you know what? It's out of my control. Let's wait and see. And Musa alayhi salam will come and deal with this. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.